we're going to uh, give you some videos here to show, to try and highlight the script that we've given you and make it easier for everyone to understand. So we're going to split this into four videos. The first video is going to be the basic bike heater with the temperatures involved and, and how it looks. The second is going to be at the addition of the air free heater to the fire heater. The third video will be the cold air bypass and the fourth video will be the hot air recirculation. So having said that, let's get down to looking at the fired heater. So here's our fired heater. Excuse my drawing, but this is the stack. This is supposed to be the stack anyway. Like that, there's your stack. We have a damper in here that is usually partially closed like this. Here's the body of the fire heater. We've got our tubes. I know you draw it way better than I am. We've got our tubes like that. Now in the fire heater, this is where the this is where the flames are. This is the burners. Like that. I'm coming to these burners is our fuel obviously so this is fuel coming in here which can be natural gas refinery gas or oil or anything like that but that's just stick with the script we've got fuel coming in and then around this down here we have a plenum where our ambient air comes in and this is air just coming in from the outside so this is ambient air We said 60 degrees, I will leave you to add the conversions to Celsius, which is in the, the rider. So we've got 60 degree ambient air, we've got fuel coming in here, and this is where our 2500 degree typical flame temperature is. This heats all this fried heater up, and coming out at the top here now, we're down about 800 degrees. And this, is going to the stack and to the atmosphere. And that's what that's your basic fire heater. Natural this is draft. which is natural draft fire heater. Okay, the second video now is going to be on adding the air free heater. The first thing we're going to do, you notice I actually changed the damper a little bit uh, from what I showed you before, but this is more open, which is where it should have been. So I'm going to move the damper now to the closed position. So we're going to show the damper now in the closed position. Now this is where we're going to fly in some of this ducting. So we're going to take a duct from here all over to here and bring it down like this. And I'm going to label this F1 because this is flyaway one. This is the first duct that's going to fly in. Then we're going to put the air preheater in down here. This is going to be F2. And all you need to do to show the air preheater is just a box like this. Then we're gonna have a duct coming out like this from the air preheater, going to the ID fan. Like that. So the flue gas now is gonna go, I got some red here, so I'm gonna show you this with red. So the flue gas is going to go like this, come all the way down, like this to the ID fan. Through the air preheater. So this is through the air preheater. This is, lab let's label this hot flue gas. Once it's been through the air preheater, it becomes cold. Maybe, sorry, let me do this again. It becomes cold blue gas. Now, so this is flyaway duct three, F3, that we're bringing in. From the ID fan, this ducting now goes back up here. We're going all the way up here. And we're coming across 
all the way back to our stack, which is why we needed that taller stack in it. Probably we should even make it a little taller. So this is now cold flu gas. And that is now coming out at about 300 degrees. I'm going to the stack. So instead of going to the stack before at 800, now I'm going to the stack at 300. Now, the other side of this is the air side. So now we've got an FD fan. That's how we depict a fan. And actually, this is bringing now, bringing the air, ambient air in. This is what we call a rain hood, just keeps the rain off it, but that we should depict that. So this is ambient air now coming in. That goes into the fan. The fan is now going to bring this air. I'm going to dot it around here because it goes around this. Like this. I got that F3 is in the way, excuse me. I should have put that F3 down here. And so, so this is cold air. And this we're gonna call, what we up to now? Uh, this was uh, F3, this was F4. So this is now, this will be F5. F6. Okay, Dave, I'm gonna, so the F3, 4, 5, 6, all of the Fs are the flying pieces that's yes. coming, together coming together as BD is talking. Yes. Okay, correct, okay. Exactly. Okay. Now we come out, the cold air now goes through the air preheater, like this, and becomes, now when talking hot air, And this comes back down to here now. And so now instead of being ambient air, we're now at hot air. At 700 degrees. Yeah. So that's your basic air preheater. And let's see what I'm up to, F5, F6, so this will be F7. And this is for? And this is the addition of the air preheater. This is the pieces flying in. Yes. So F1 will fly in first after you do the natural draft, two, three, and so forth. And basically what the air preheater just did was raise the temperature of the ambient air going to the burners. Can you point to that, Dave, the 700 degree? Yes, right, yeah, yes. that's the ambient now, air. So the other thing now hotter. is now then we're coming out at 300 degrees on the other side of the damper. So it's 800 degrees on this side of the damper, going like that, and then 300 degrees coming out, going to the atmosphere. Right, after it goes, it cycled through the air preheater. Exactly. Okay, so please email me if you have any questions about that. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the cold air bypass. Just to so show that this is a little easier, I'm just gonna take this duct out here, just so you can see. So the cold air bypass, we're actually bringing another duct from the cold air, which goes like this. So we put another damper in here, so we can control the amount of air, but the cold air, part of it comes down here and goes this way. So now we've got air going from the FD fan, goes through the air preheater, but we're also partially bypassing part of it around here and they mix together here. So you've got hot gas coming down here at 700 degrees F and we've got cold air at 60 degrees F coming in here. So we'll mix this and let's assume that it's down about 650 degrees F. 
So that's the cold air bypass. And what are the uh, benefits for having cold air bypass? This is covered in the script, but basically the benefits of uh, having the cold air bypass is that we maintain the, the fluid gas outlet temperature as this ambient air drops below 60 degrees. Uh, this temperature going to the stack would keep dropping. And so by particularly if we get down below freezing, we can start to get corrosion taking place in the, in the air preheater. So this helps maintain the flue gas exit temperature. Although the, the cold air is still gonna be cold air going into the exchanger. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna talk about the alternative to cold air bypassing, which is hot air recirculation, which also actually prevents corrosion even better. So essentially, this is this is going to stay the same as ducting, except what we're going to do now is we're not taking the cold air from there. We're actually going to move this duct. I'm going to go around the fan, excuse me, like this. And this is going to come back up to here. And what we're going to do, instead of the arrow going this way, we're actually going to take now part of this hot air, and we're gonna bring part of this back this way. So the hot air comes back through here now, around here, back into the FD, the, the FD fan. And what that does is now you've got 700 degree F air coming in at this point, mixing with the ambient air. And so no matter what, we size it so that no matter what this ambient air temperature is, we still always are coming out of here at 60 degrees or higher if we want to really prevent corrosion. So by doing this, it's very simple. We now have constant air temperature going into the air preheater and we also have our constant air temperature of 700 degrees coming back to the burners, always at that. So overall, this becomes a much more efficient system. The only thing we have to do is we make the air preheater slightly bigger because you've got a bigger flow, airflow now going through the air preheater and this will increase in size no more than 5%, which is a small capital increase, capital cost increase. That is hot air recirculation. A much better solution to cold and corrosion. In the air preheater, correct? Yeah, and prevents corrosion in the air preheater. Okay, so basically, can you explain that without the drawing because it was kind of in the way with the red marker? Just so we know that it's where the hot air is coming from. The hot air is coming back from down here. From right the there. outlet side of from the, the air. From the outlet side of, the, of the, the hot air duct. In the air preheater. And from the air preheater and it comes back all the way back to the suction side of the fan. Now, another point is if, what happens if we don't have enough fan, because now we've increased the fan, going to the fan. So if we don't have enough fan to do this system, then all we do is we take this part out here, like this, and going to come back down here and we add a small recirculating fan here and we bring this hot air into this point here. So even if we were lit fan limited on this point, we can still do hot air recirculation by adding a small fan at this point, which then overcomes the pressure and starts mixing right before the air preheater. Yeah. Okay, so it further heats that 60 degrees Fahrenheit before it even passes through the air per year. Would the temperature change to the burners? Would it be then it stays, more? We size it so that typically the hot air going to the burners stays the same at 700 degrees. So this becomes 700 degrees still. Okay. So and, you know, basically why we've got 60 degrees here, well, this is really size. This could be zero degrees F here. Yeah, 
Frank. and then but then we recirculate enough hot air around to bring this back up to 60 degrees before it hits the before it hits the heat exchanger or higher okay so this is usually um convenient for places that's up north or have colder temperatures snow etc exactly okay